Welcome back to Adventurous Way. I'm Diana, and today we're visiting Petrified Forest National Park in Arizona. This is unit number 24 on our journey to visit all national park units. As always, the first stop is the visitor center where we finalize our plan for the next two days of exploring the park, including some off the beaten path backcountry hiking. Behind me, you can see painted desert as layers of mudstone and sandstone that formed millions and millions of years ago. The reason for different colors from red to purplish to bluish to grayish depends on the oxidation of the iron oxide. During times when this area was in the mud underwater, there wasn't access to oxygen, so it didn't get oxidized. So it became bluish and grayish colors. But as it over the millions of years was exposed and the oxygen oxidized the iron, then you get the red colors. Forest National Park is the only national park that preserves a portion of Route 66. The Desert Inn used to be a stop, a cafe, and, uh, a, gas station. and a gas station. The Painted Desert Inn was built around 1920 using petrified wood. In the late 1940s, it was reopened under the Fred Harvey Company management. The Harvey Company in the 1880s created America's first restaurant chain, and it also became famous for its Harvey Girls young, single, intelligent women who were also of good character, who were hired as waitresses at the Harvey houses because they were more dependable than male employees. The Harvey girls were the first female workforce in America. And now we're doing the rim trail uh, that starts at the Painted Desert Inn to see this beautiful Painted Desert behind us. This layer of soft red rocks is called the Chinlip Formation, but in places it is covered by the Bidahochi Basalt Formation, which protects the soft layers from erosion. Petrified Forest National Park is a fantastic place to learn about geology. We're calling it today for today, and we'll restart tomorrow. We'll do the drive across the Petrified Forest, and we'll stop at the hikes along the way. Welcome back. Today is our second day of exploring Petrified Forest National Park. The plan for today is we're going to drive the entire 26 mile scenic drive that goes all the way through the park and along the way there's a number of stops. So at each place we're going to stop and if there's a hike or something there to do, we're going to go out and explore the area. Our very first stop today is right here and this is the crossing of Route 66 through the park. You can see the old car there behind me to mark the point. Petrified Forest National Park is the only national park with a stretch of Route 66 going through it. And since we're following Route 66 all the way from Santa Monica Pier up to Oklahoma, it only made sense for us to stop here and see the car. The car is the shell of a 1932 Studebaker donated to the National Park Service by Arizona Automotive Service in Holbrook, Arizona. Our next stop is Puerco Pueblo where we can see the ruins of Ancestral Pueblon people village. At its peak, researchers estimate that 200 people may have lived here. This village here was occupied between 760 and 630 years ago. One of the things that's really interesting about the Petrified Forest National Park is that as well as the geological significance here, there's also all these cultural things. And one of those is that the ancestral Puebloans who lived here created petroglyphs. Now on the rock behind me, there's a petroglyph of a spiral. And what's fascinating about that particular spiral is that the center of the spiral is perfectly aligned with the summer solstice. As the light comes through a rock nearby, it shines down and ends exactly on the center of that spiral.
We are now at the Blue Mesa Trail, in which you can descend into the Badlands and see them up close. Blue Mesa layer is one of the oldest layers at this particular point in Petrobrad Forest. It has uh, come up, so that's how we can see it. And researchers have found fossils of uh, dinosaurs in this layer. The trail is about one mile long, it is paved, and it's 120 feet of elevation gain to get back up to the parking lot. It is the bluish bentonite clay that gives the trail its name. There are lots of specimens of petrified wood to see, and over the years, numerous plant and animal fossils have been found here too. The dinosaur fossils found here are from the late Triassic period, going back over 200 million years. This period is also sometimes called the dawn of the dinosaurs, which is when these animals first appeared worldwide, but before the earth was ruled by dinosaurs. These dinosaurs were bipedal and no larger than a human. Our next stop is Agate Bridge, which is a 100 foot long petrified log spanning a gully, though now it is supported underneath. Next is a very brief stop at Jasper Forest because we will be back there the next day for a backcountry hike. Our next stop is Crystal Forest, is three and a quarter mile paved loop trail where you can see the petrified forest up close. 220 million years ago, this was a forest. I really like learning about plants and whenever I see a new flower, especially if it's a blooming flower, I want to figure out what its name, especially if it's yellow because that's my favorite color. So what do you think of the Petrified Forest so far? I really like the uh, Petrified Forest National Park here. I think it's incredibly accessible just off the interstate. I think you could do it in a day if you wanted to. Uh, I love the, the variety. We've seen petroglyphs, we've seen the petrified wood, we've done some hiking. We've just done a lot of interesting things and there's still a lot more to go. So uh, early impressions, so far so good. I like it. So now after lunch, we'll continue on to the next stops. Yep, so uh, this morning we've done a lot of the kind of the, the photo stops and the, the short walks and things. Uh, we've got a couple more walks this afternoon that we're going to do, then not long, I think it's about three miles total across the, the few of them. And then tomorrow is the backcountry hiking, which I'm pretty excited about. Me too. Rainbow Forest Museum and Visitor Center exhibits fossils and skeletons of prehistoric plants and animals. We are now on the Giant Logs Trail and we picked up this uh, trail guide that talks more about each stop. It's very interesting. Sandstone platform provides a commanding view of the Rainbow Forest building complex. These were some of the first structures built here for park use. This is Old Faithful Log up to 35 feet long and 44 tons. This is 
our final stop of day two of exploring Petrograd Forest National Park. We are now at the Forest Museum down here and we will hike up Long Logs Trail up to Agade House, which is Pueblo uh, ruins built from the petrified rocks. And then we'll do this loop back and come back down here. The Agate House was built with agatized wood blocks and mud mortar by the ancestral Puebloans between 1050 and 1300 CE. While it likely only housed a single family, it may have served as a central gathering place thanks to its relatively large size. Its construction was thought to have been unique when it was first discovered by archaeologists in the 1930s, but hundreds of similar petrified wood structure sites have been found in the park since then. It had been a long day, but we made it, stopping at almost every viewing spot in the park and doing each hike along the way. Time to call the day. Today is day three of exploring Petrified Forest National Park. Today is all about backcountry hiking. The first hike we will do is a hike that leads to the Onyx Bridge. What might be different to compare to other national parks, this is hiking in the wilderness. There are no trails and you are supposed to follow um, I mean, really, you don't really need to follow anything, but there is uh, certain hikes that the National Park Service, together with the volunteers, have developed. So we picked up a guidebook from the visitor center the day we arrived here. And uh, there, for each of the backcountry hikes, it kind of shows the pictures for each turn or kind of marker so that you can follow it. So the first one we're doing is Onyx Bridge, which is a petrified forest tree that is making a bridge. Here the dry wash crosses the path. Do not follow the dry wash to your right, continue straight on the path. Look to your left and you will see the ruins of an old stone bridge from the early 20th century. It was built by Herbert Law as part of his road system in the Painted Desert. Uh, this over here is the wash. And there's the bridge, and I guess. Where is the trail. Oh yeah, it looks like ruins of old bridge. Here the trail becomes less visible and we are heading towards the kind of squared off butte off in the distance. During monsoon season, June through September, crossing lithodendron wash can be dangerous. Flash floods can sweep through the area very quickly. In early May, we were safe from those dangers. So we are standing just here in front of that mound there. And we're going to head on left just around there, and I think the Onyx Bridge should be just at the top of the rockfall. We have found the Onyx Bridge, and now we'll go back to the Painted Desert Inn the same way we came. Let's talk about how this petrified wood was made. 220 million years ago, this was a tropical forest, and there was a river flowing through it. So the trees uh, from that forest, they're falling down in the river or the banks of the river and they get buried under sand and mud. Also during that time, um, volcanoes erupted. So the ash also was in the mixture of the mud and the sand. Because they were buried underground, underwater, oxygen couldn't get to them. So the, they were well preserved. They didn't decay. So that over time, over millions of years, water percolated through them and water was rich in silica. This is because of the ash. The ash mixing in the water um, had silica and other minerals. So then as it's percolating through the tree, over time it binds to the cells of the tree and replaces the organic matter with uh, quartz. Millions of years later, the whole tree becomes a quartz rock. And then about 60 million years ago, this area starting, started to raise up and the layers above started to erode. And that's when these rocks started to become visible. You may also ask, 
why there are so clean cuts on the on the wood well that is because of the properties of quartz when this tall long tree is buried underground there's a lot of ground on top of it and over the years it becomes super super heavy so it starts cracking so one of the properties of quartz is that it cracks in the shortest path which is perpendicular to the to the tree which is similar for example if you uh, drop a chalk like a, a round piece of chalk it will also crack in uh, straight cuts so yeah this is how uh, petrified wood is made and we can see here in petrified forest national park and this area in arizona around and who knows maybe millions of years from now there will be more areas where you can see because it's probably still a lot of places underground it's just the ground hasn't been eroded away yet We just got back from the Onyx Trail backcountry hike. For us, it was 4.8 miles and it took us uh, two and a half hours. It was 500 feet of total elevation, most of it in the very end going back up. Normally, it's not that much, but we are at almost 6,000 feet elevation. After some lunch, now we're ready for the second hike of the day, which is Jasper Forest. This is another wilderness hike and we'll follow the guidebook and see where it leads us. The road was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps, the CCC, in the 1930s, but it was closed in 1965 and allowed to erode away. But along the hike, you can see many of the original stone culverts lining the road where it crosses washers. These are key markers in the guide. And this is the culvert that carried water under the road to the other side there. Where we just walked on used to be an asphalt road. This is how people experience Petrified Forest. This road led to this small boot behind me that is called Eagle Nest Rock. Before 1941, it used to have rock formation on top that unfortunately since then has been eroded away. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video about Petrified Forest National Park as much as we did being here. If you did, then make sure to hit that like button and we'll see you next time. In the next episode, we cross into New Mexico and visit El Moro National Monument. Comment below what you think this forest is afraid of. I pray to God that does not make the cut. <laughs> it will. But you look so bored and stressed when you're saying it. No, but I'm trying to be deadpan. Leave a comment below as to what you think this forest is afraid of. Thanks for watching and see you next time. No, come on, more than that. Yeah, I know.